Hey, what is going on everybody? My name is Payne and welcome back to another anime review video and as promised this is another Ghibli review video and as you can see from the thumbnail I'm not really too happy about this video. Uh, not because that's bad or anything but it's just this is the most intense movie or show that I've reviewed so far and for anyone who has seen the movie before or know what this movie is, you know exactly why. For anyone who has never heard of this movie before, you're going to find out why. So here is the one, the only, Grave of the Fireflies. Grave of the Fireflies is a war and drama film directed and written by Isao Takahata, produced by Toru Hara, and was made by Studio Ghibli. It was released on April 16th, 1988, on the same day as Hayao Miyazaki's My Neighbor Totoro as a double feature, was released as a dub by Central Park Media in 1998, and was re-released as another dub by Sarah from Digital and Sentai Filmworks in 2012, and was 89 minutes long, or 1 hour and 29 minutes long. The reason why I didn't mention Disney's name at all is because this was the first Ghibli film to be released to where Disney didn't have the rights to show it in North America, as Ghibli's parent company, Tokuma Shoden, had nothing to do with the movie, as Shonen was Disney's gateway to showing these movies over here, although they did have the rights to distribute it in Japan. But instead, this movie was produced for Shinchosha Publishing, the original publisher for the inspiration of this movie, which is a, a semi-autobiographical short story written in 1967 by the late Akiyuki Nosaka that was based on his experiences before, during, and after the 1945 Kobe air raids during World War II. I'm just going to let off a little warning here. There are some spoilers in this review. If you haven't seen this movie, I suggest you do before continuing the video. And if you haven't seen this movie but still want to continue anyway, well, all I can say is that you've been warned. To make it short and simple, the movie follows 14-year-old Seda, who is in charge with the care of his 4-year-old younger sister, Setsuko, after an American firebombing during World War II separated the two children from their parents. After finding out that their mother died in the blast, they go live with their aunt at her place, but they later leave their aunt's house as she keeps saying that they, they did nothing of worth to stay there and eat their food. They later find a new home out of an underground shelter or cave, but later discover that they are running out of food, leading Setsuko to, to suffer from malnutrition. And the movie ends with Seda finding out that Japan had surrendered from World War II, and while returning to the underground shelter with a lot of food and news that the war is over, he unfortunately finds that Setsuko had died of her malnutrition. At first, Nosaka was skeptical that a movie would be made about the novel because he thought it would be too difficult to depict a backdrop and to find any child actors that would play Setsuko and Seda. In his mind, he's thinking a live-action movie. But after being offered to have it be adapted into an animated film and uh, to look at the storyboards that Ghibli has made, Nosaka then proclaimed that there was no way that anyone would make this without animation, as he was impressed by how certain aspects of the novel were portrayed in the movie. As for Takahata, he said that he was compelled to make Grave of the Fireflies because he wanted to get rid of the mindset that people had. Uh, that people during World War II were noble and were more able to do certain things that they actually are, making the audience develop an inferiority complex and not worry about the characters that much. But he changes that by showing how vulnerable Seda and Setsuko were at certain points in the film, in other words, most of the movie, making it almost impossible not to worry about them at some points. After the film was released, uh, there was also a common belief from fans and critics that this was an anti-war film, to which Takahata repeatedly said that, no, this is not an anti-war film, and this doesn't have an anti-war message, and what it has instead is that uh, he was trying to convey an image of Seda and Setsuko living a failed life due to isolation from society and trying to invoke sympathy, particularly in uh, the younger demographic, late teens, early 20s, and he's right. That, that's exactly what this movie is, but regardless of what people think it is in their own right, this movie eventually, just like Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, just like Perfect Blue, uh, I don't even know if I said this, Castle in the Sky, or every other Ghibli movie that I might review in the future, this movie was considered one of, if not the greatest animated films of all time. And if you think I sound like a broken record after a while, well, I, I really don't blame you. There's only a couple of things that I can really talk about with this film, considering that there are no heroes in this film, there are no villains, although you can argue that the ant may be the only villain in, uh, in this movie, and that the war is neither represented in a positive or negative light, let alone it was never part of the main story to begin with. Let's start off with the animation. In my opinion, it was really, really good, as just like every other Ghibli film, it's clear that a lot of effort was put into it, and again, it was so good that the author even proclaimed that, you know, it was very impressive because so much detail was put into very little pieces of information that was put in the novel. And the music, although 
not done by Joe Hisaishi as Hayao Miyazaki took him to work on My Name or Totoro, it was still nevertheless very touching, now, as it never went out of its way to get noticed, but it was just enough to make me feel for Seda and Setsuko, which brings us to the plot and characters. The story is the most troubling part for me to look over because at the end of the day, what you see is two siblings go through hell and back multiple times after their house got blown up, from Seda trying not to tell Setsuko that their mother got burned into a crisp, to trying to keep her alive while she suffered from mal malnutrition. We're mainly talking about Seda here. Uh, but the worst part of all this, and let me repeat what I said during the synopsis, Seda is 14 and Setsuko is 4. It, at the end of the day, if you have that in mind, I don't see a reason why you shouldn't think that this whole situation's messed up. And the thing is, during all of this, they're trying to act like normal kids and act like nothing is wrong, which leads me to the characters, primarily Setsuko and Seda, of course, and uh, I'm, I'm gonna be honest here, I really don't want to criticize this movie in any form, even when it deserves it, but that's what a reviewer does. I mean, I, I decided to be a reviewer, might as well do it. <laughs> First, I'll start with Setsuko, who is, to be honest, rather annoying, but I'll give her a pass because she's four and she doesn't know what the fuck is going on half the time and she doesn't process shit that quickly and coming from an older sibling, four-year-olds act like that and anyone who say, who says that, you know, that ruined the movie for them, there's something wrong with you. But as for Seda, she's not getting off that easy in my book and here is why. And that is because, if you really think about it, yeah, he's caring for his little sister, trying to get food for her while they were in the shelter, but let's backtrack a little bit. Why is Seda and Sezuko living in an underground shelter? Because they left their aunt's house. Why did they leave their aunt's house? Because their aunt kept saying uh, that both Seda and Setsuko, they don't really do anything at the house. And she's right, she's right, she, they don't do anything. Well, all they do is play with each other, but again, you can't really blame them for that. But if you really think about it logically, because that Seda had a pride hit, he left his aunt's house with Setsuko where there was food and shelter, completely ignores a guy who is walking by them and who suggests that he should apologize to her and come back, and then they go to the shelter to where Setsuko eventually dies, and then two weeks after that, Seda dies. In other words, every sad and depressing thing that happens in the final half hour of this movie is all Seda's fault. That, that, that's fucked up. It's because his ego got hurt. It's because his pride got hurt. Overall, this movie turned out to be one of the most depressing things I've ever seen. And uh, at the end of the day, it just filled me up with anger, frustration, sadness, basically any emotion that an 18 year old shouldn't have. But at the same time, emotions aside, this movie is very well done production wise with the animation and music setting the scenes very well and the voice actors were really good. The dub was really good. There was really nothing like stand out, nothing that really stood out about that. But then I heard that in the sub, I watched the sub, they had a five-year-old girl voice Setsuko and even she was really good. I gotta give her props for that. I can't think of any other reason anyone would want to watch this movie other than just want to cry their eyes out. But in the end, regardless of what emotion it brings out of you, this is definitely one of the best Ghibli movies. In my opinion, this is the best non-Miyazaki Ghibli movie, and is definitely in the running for one of the best Ghibli movies of all time. But to me, it rubbed me the wrong way for all the wrong reasons. And for that, I'm gonna give Grave of the Fireflies an eight out of 10. Thank you guys for watching my Grave of the Fireflies review video. If you like this video, if you wanna see more Ghibli review videos, uh, hit the like button down below. If you wanna see more review videos in the near future, you can hit the subscribe button on the screen or down below. If you want to see more videos that I've made in the past, you can. Uh, there's going to be some on the screen, down in the channel, and down in the description below. And with that, my name is Payne. I have a definite promise that I'll be way more excited and way more hyped in the next video. Um, see you in the next video then.